Tom Long. Welcome to Beach Meditations. I just had an epiphany. And guess what? So did you. Because today, January 6, 2021, is the day of epiphany. And it celebrates the time when, as we're told in uh, Matthew chapter 2, the uh, Magi came to bring gifts to Jesus and they were the first to recognize him as king. And so basically, I think of Epiphany as uh, the veil is lifted and now we see that this little baby that we celebrated at Christmas, the baby born in the manger, has in fact come to be king, to be uh, the ruler of all. And so um, it's a little bit weird, unusual, that, um, you know, if, if you come from a uh, church background to realize that uh, it wasn't a prophet, it wasn't a uh, pastor, it wasn't a priest, it wasn't a religious leader, it wasn't a secular Jewish leader, but it was actually uh, magi who were probably astrologers coming from foreign lands into Israel who were the first to recognize that Jesus was the king. And um, I don't want to read too much into that, except uh, there's, a, there's a certain uh, segment of the church that is like, uh, oh, we can't learn anything by reading uh, secular books, or we can't learn anything by listening to secular music, we can't learn anything by studying uh, uh, the religions of other groups or the cultures of other groups. But in fact, it was these foreign non-Jewish um, practicers of a um, not accepted uh, astrology that were the first to recognize that Jesus is king. Christ the King. That's what this is all about. It's been revealed. And so that was our first uh, lectionary reading for today, for the day of Epiphany. That was Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And then the second one was Isaiah 60, 1 through 6. And here we have, um, in verse 2, Isaiah is drawing this imagery of uh, not just darkness, but darkness and thick darkness. And that uh, thick darkness phrase that's used there is usually used to refer to uh, the, the darkness of cloud cover. And so this passage is saying that when the king comes, he's coming into a, a world that is dark both at night and, uh, because, you know, the, the sun has gone down and during the day. Uh, and the imagery there is of one of those overcast days and uh, it was just a day or two ago I was out on the beach and uh, it was you didn't need sunglasses at all because it was dark out and so that's what this is referring to and but the darkness that the prophet uh, is referring to here in Isaiah uh, chapter 60 is the darkness of a world without knowledge of Christ the King and so the, now the light uh, has come into the into that world, and uh, so we're bid uh, to arise and shine in verse one because the king is the king of light has come. But the, the what I want to focus on today is the psalm reading, Psalm seventy two, uh, verses one through seven and ten through um, fourteen. Now, a lot of the titles that uh, Jesus uses that are used to refer to Jesus are more spiritual or religious. Um, but king is a political title. It means somebody that um, has the rule over the people. And Psalm 72 is, um, it, it serves kind of a dual purpose because as the Israelis are being called out of the Babylonian captivity to come back to Israel uh, and reestablish the kingdom of Israel because God has uh, had mercy on them, the psalmist is telling us what the ideal king of Israel should be like. And of course, uh, the king of kings, Jesus, is that ideal 
king. And so Psalm 72 is really describing for us the king, uh, King Jesus. And the agenda of this king is a little unusual. So we just came out, and I live in the United States, and we just came out of a, a very heated uh, election process. And uh, there wasn't a lot of talk about uh, platforms. It was just more demonizing, you know, other parties and all that. We won't go into that. But uh, if we were to talk about what platform would the King of Kings run on, we find that. Uh, so if you're looking for the platform statement for Jesus the King, it's in Psalm 72. And we see there that he has a pretty revolutionary agenda. In verse 3, he is uh, going to be the king of prosperity and good character. In other words, Jesus is the exemplar of a political leader who allows the land, and here it's talking about an agrarian culture, allows the land to be fruitful and make the regular guy and regular woman uh, able to have prosperity because so much is coming up out of, out of the earth. And then uh, secondly, in, in uh, verse 3, is that the people will be fruitful in terms of righteousness. So this is a leader that inspires the kind of industry that produces fruit that is distributed among everyone, all of the people, and secondly, that brings out the best character in people. And uh, verse 4 describes the administration of the king's rule, and it says that it is to defend the cause of the poor, and I'm quoting there, and secondly, quote, give deliverance to the needy, and third, crush the oppressor. So, although John in 1836, eight, chapter 18, verse 36, uh, is where Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world, uh, our king in, in uh, 72, the, king, the description of this king is a king who receives his authority from God, and his charge is to be all of these things, to allow people to be fruitful to allow, to encourage in people good character, and then to protect those who are weak and give help to those who are in need. And so that is why in that uh, uh, Isaiah reading, we're told to arise and shine. Our king is one who is looking out for the little guy. Our king is one who is going to crush the oppressor and lift those who are in need and need help. So it's something to think about. And when we when we look at the political landscape, whatever country you're in, uh, it, it's interesting to ask ourselves what are what are the priorities? Because Psalm 72 says the priorities should be righteousness, good character, right, and justice that the weak and the oppressed be protected and the oppressor be crushed. So uh, it's, it's pretty graphic the way that uh, justice is described, but there it is. And so Jesus has been revealed to be this kind of king. And we, as those who claim to be Christ followers, are called to participate in having that upright character and that zeal for justice. So I hope that uh, on this day of Epiphany, January 6th, that uh, God will reveal himself to you through his word to be the kind of king that we all long for. May you find it in Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. May God bless you richly. See you next time.